now we are going to talk about the cranial nerve nuclei right within the brain stem right you know that there are so many cranial nerves attached with the brain stem and you should know exactly that all the fibers which are coming into cranial nerves they are coming from which cranial nerve nuclei in the brain stem and what is the position of those nuclei within the brain stem for example some cranial nerve nuclei in the midbrain there are other cranial nerve nuclei which are in the pons and there are still other cranial nerve nuclei which are present in the medulla is that right uh, before really i start the different types of cranial nerve nuclei uh, i will first discuss about the gray matter of spinal cord because gray matter of spinal cord right it is it is connected with different type of uh, motor and sensory fibers and that spinal cord concept will transform into concept of cranial nerve nuclei which are also motor and sensory nuclei right so let's start with first of all spinal cord let's suppose here is spinal cord and in this spinal cord of course this is posterior median sulcus and this is anterior median fissure and here it is gray matter isn't it fine and now there is central canal now you know that the neurons the cell bodies of neurons which are present in anterior horn these are motor neuron what are these these are motor neurons is that right and the neuronal cell bodies which are present on the posterior horn these are yes sensory. sensory neurons these are cell bodies of the sensory neurons if you really go to very basic embryological region you must be knowing that this is alar plate they are developing sensory neurons are developing from the alar plate and motor neurons are developing from the motor gray horn is developing from the basal plate right then here are neurons on the lateral side right and these neurons are concerned with the visceral activity they are concerned with the visceral activity is that right now let's talk about the different type type of fibers which are connected with this anterior gray horn lateral gray horn and posterior gray horn now what we will talk about we shall talk about the different type of fibers which are connected to these what are these these cell bodies is that right anterior gray horn uh, let's uh, actually from the anterior gray horn for example this is one cell its axons will come out and they are connected with the what is this skeletal muscle for is that right and this is voluntary muscle for example quadriceps or biceps biceps in upper Limb or quadriceps in the lower limb. Now, such fibers which are directly going to skeletal muscles, right? And those skeletal muscles, of course, which are under voluntary controls, right? Such fibers are called general somatic, general somatic efferents, efferents. Because these fibers are going out of central nervous system as motor. So, motor fibers are called efferent fibers because they are generally connected with. many many skeletal muscles right so they are called general and somatic somatic mean which are under your willful control is it right so general somatic efferents from so in the spinal cord from the neurons which are present in anterior gray horn the fibers which are going out what types of fibers are these yes please general somatic efferents right but you know all over the body there are blood vessels and there are sweat glands and there are diff so these glands and blood vessels need autonomic fibers is that right they need visceral fibers is that right so for example these are glands over here and these glands are present generally all over the body so any neurons which are coming to these glands they should be special neurons or general neuron they should be general for sweat glands are present all over the body remember special things are present in some special areas for example eyes are present only here is that right sense of vision is present here sense of smell is present here sense of taste is in the tongue but touch sense is all over the body so touch sense should be general somatic 
sense of distension from different viscera is from all the viscera. So that should be general visceral sensations. In the same way, skeletal muscles are present all over the body, isn't it? So they will be general somatic fibers. So again, the efferent fibers, efferent fibers which are coming from the spinal cord to the peripheral tissue, they can be divided into two efferent fibers. The some efferent fibers are general somatic efferent, which are going to the skeletal muscles, and then there are general, yes, general visceral, general visceral efferents, which are going to generally most viscera. Is that right? General visceral efferent, usually uh, from the lateral horn, if this is sympathetic outflow, they will go into the most blood vessels. Is that right? They are smooth muscles. Am I clear? Now, so this was motor horn. This is visceral horn. In visceral horn, there are motor fibers coming out. And what is this? Sensory horn. Now, the sensations which are going to the dorsal column, they are called... They may be touch, they may be pain sense, or they may be temperature sense, or they may be proprioception sense. All these sensations which are going to the dorsal horn, these sensations, these fibers are called, because they are from all over the body, right? So these fibers are called general somatic afferents. These are general somatic afferents, right? Then, from the different viscera, right? For example, there is a viscera here. Okay, I'll make it GIT or let's make it uterus. This is cervix. So there's pain when cervix is distended during pregnancy. So these fibers which are taking information to this part, you know, this was lateral horn. This lateral horn has two types of cell bodies. Some cell bodies are motor and other are sensory. As Anteriorly, in this visceral area, anteriorly there are motor fibers and posteriorly there are sensory. So, sensations from the viscera are going to the spinal cord and connected here. And because they are going for many viscera, so we can call it general visceral, yes, general visceral afferents. So, in the spinal cord, there are all input and output which is general. Output means motor system is general. Right? Input system is general. Motor system is general as well as sensory system is general. But special systems will come into play in the head and neck. For example, taste sensation. That cannot be generally elicited from the body. Do you think you will put ice cream something here and you will taste it? No. You can feel the cold of the ice cream all over the body, but you can taste only with your own tongue. Is that right? So it means that head and neck must have some additional neurons for the special motor and sensory system. But spinal cord has general neurons and general fibers. Again, with general fibers, there is general motor outflow and there is general sensory inflow. General, general motor outflow is general fibers coming to the skeletal muscles which are called general somatic efferents. efferents. And motor fibers coming to the general viscera and glands, these are called general visceral efferents, right? And in the spinal cord, the sensations which are coming, right? They are general somatic afferents like touch, pain, temperature, sense of position, vibration, and there is general visceral afferent. Is that right? This is the basic plan in spinal cord. Now, when you move upward, when spinal cord, as it is moving upward, it convert into brain stem. Of course, spinal cord, as you're moving upward, it will convert into first middle oblongata, then into pons, and then into midbrain. Now, what really happens as we are moving upward, right? Let's suppose here is medulla, here is pons, and here it is, yes, midbrain. Is that right? Now, This is midbrain. Now, actually, motor column will be going up as well as sensory column will be going up, right? These gray column, gray matter column, as they are ascending upward, I've told you in previous lecture, there are major motor decussations and there are major sensory decussations in the brain stem. 
when so many fibers are crossing over these sensory and motor horns they break down into small pieces and those pieces of the gray matter are called nuclei these are called nuclei so as spinal nerves are connected to this anterior gray horn anterior gray matter and spinal nerves are connected with the posterior gray matter and lateral gray matter in the same way cranial nerves must be connected to cranial nerve nuclei cranial nerves must be connected to cranial nerve nuclei is that right now we'll make some basic concept related with the cranial nerve nuclei one thing which we talked about previously that as spinal cord is ascending upward what is this central canal the central canal will open and convert into fourth ventricle, ventricle. and one way to imagine what really happens to this gray uh, you can say gray matter that let's suppose we put your finger here fingers here and open it up like this is that right when you will open like this of course this will wide up and this will make fourth ventricle, ventricle. are you understanding me mm. or not mm. right so this will convert into fourth ventricle but when you are opening it from the back like this these will move medially and these will move laterally so we can say basal plates will move medially and alar plate will move laterally or another way to say is that as spinal cord gray matter is uh, ascending upward the gray matter columns are ascending upward when spinal canal open to make up the fourth ventricle then naturally what really happens that motor motor gray matter comes to the medial side and sensory gray matter goes on the lateral side as i told you this these gray matters will break down into small pieces which are called cranial nerve nuclei so naturally what will happen that motor nuclei will be present medially and sensory nuclei will be present laterally is it difficult to understand really easy for sure now so what we can say that throughout the you can say spinal cord uh, sorry brain stem uh, your motor system will be on the medial side motor nuclei will be present medially and generally speaking sensory nuclei will be present laterally is it difficult to understand is it clear now once this concept is clear now i will go into detail of what nuclei are exactly present there and which fibers are connected there